All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Happy New Year. It will be New Year's by the time you guys see this. Uh, today, we're going to take some time and talk about what will be the final what to buy build cheat sheet in the series for this year. We may revisit it in the uh, late fall, early winter of 21, but we'll see. Um, this is the 650 horsepower level, roughly. It's hard to say, it's hard to nail down an exact number for people, but this is really beyond the limit that I'm going to go or willing to go. It's beyond the limit that most people really need to go, even though I know it sounds super cool. Obviously, if you have a 6 liter or a 6.2, you'll make more power. If you have a 4.8, you'll make less. It doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's more than enough to, to do rolling 65 mile an hour burnouts and send your dumb ass into a tree. So just be aware of that. And it's really expensive at this point. So... We'll get started here. The number one thing, I mean, for me, I, I'm about having fun and I'm about having a good time and I'm about not sinking my entire retirement fund into an engine. Um, people get focused on what what's the best head, what's the best intake, what's the best you know, engine to start with, grab any, any gen three long block out of the junkyard, any complete runner and run that shit. Use the stock heads. It doesn't matter if they're seven Oh sixes. It doesn't matter if they're eight six twos. It doesn't matter if they're three one sevens. Use the stock rods. I don't care if they're gen four or not. Use the stock gaskets. Use the stock bolts. I don't care if they're torqued to yield. I don't care about trunnions. I don't care about ARP. If it spins, it wins. Find something that drove to the scene of the accident that smashed as hell or buy a running driving donor and take everything out of it and change your cam. That's where we're starting. That's the basis for every one of these builds. If you munch that thing, if you spin it into oblivion, if it eats itself alive, all you have to worry about is your cam. Everything else comes off the outside of the engine and you don't care. You just move on. That's the beauty of this. If you're one of those buy once, cry once, cheap parts ain't good, good parts ain't cheap, you're in the wrong place, man. Head to the Mopar pages, build you a 446 pack or some dumb shit. Um, we're just trying to have fun here and, you know, maybe surprise some people. But the truth is that even, you know, a C8 Corvette's what, like 500 horsepower? I, I bet my truck would shock the shit out of one NA right now. So, and honestly, to be honest, the, the inspiration for a lot of this, and I'll drop a link in the description below, is uh, the Don't BS Me build that Matt Happel did over on Sloppy Mechanics. And I know that he's moved far beyond that now with his 8s for 8s and you know, more advanced builds, they don't really resonate with me personally. They might resonate with you. That's fine. He's got tons of good content. Check him out. I'll put the link in the description. But for me, you know, where I live is on the street and I don't want to drag race. I'm not trying to compete in a class. I'm not chasing a number. I'm just trying to have a good time. So I don't want to put a lot of money into it. To run at this level, you're going to need fuel. You're going to need lots of fuel, and you're going to need it to be E85 fuel because it's so much more forgiving than pump gas. You can almost certainly forget, if you're a novice, just get the idea of running pump gas and making 650 tire with a 5.3 right out of your head right now. Um, if you're more experienced, if you're more, I could make pump gas work at, at this boost levels and power levels probably, but eventually you run up against the laws of physics, so... I could do it on my truck, probably, maybe. Um, it would really be pushing it. So you can run E85 one of two ways. I'll be doing a video on that shortly, but you can just straight up run E85 all of the time, or you can do the content sensor and everything else. Um, for the fuel pump, the chemsos from the earlier levels still work. Uh, if you need an extra pump, the Bosch 044, they're inline pumps. I know that some of you out there are just fixated on sticking one of these on your frame and, and not doing anything in the tank, and I guarantee you, you'll have fuel delivery problems if you do it. Um, but if you need to add something in addition to what you have in the tank, what I've done is put two chemsos inside my tank. I just wide them, and they're flopping around, zip-tied to the pickup. No big deal. If I need more fuel, I will put a Bosch 044 in line, back as a boost to pump. Um... 
people want people love to complicate shit, right? They love to. I'm gonna get a hop switch and put it in there on level one. It's good. No, just that's the purpose of return style fuel systems. You can be pumping five thousand liters per hour, and it's all just gonna run back to the tank. Just so, just have more than you need all the time. Forget about all these switches and shit that fail, and then your shit blows up, and you're crying in the comment section. Uh, injectors, same thing. The Snake Eater, Snake Eater offers a 210. Uh, there's other Bosch 210s out there. They're 90 bucks a piece, which is literally double the price of the injectors in my truck. So $720. This will be more than enough fuel. And one thing that you have to remember is there's calculators out there, but they're not 100%. And when, you, when you're and when you running E, if you're running E85 out of the pump, it could be anything from 50 to 90%. Um, so if you're going to run straight E, you probably really need to mix your own and know that E85 is alcohol is not as efficient. There's not as much energy per gallon in it. So you have to flow more of it, which is why cars get crappier mileage. Flex fuel cars get crappier mileage on E85. When they run E, they get lower mileage because they have to inject more of it. So you need more overhead on your pump and on your injectors for this to work on the turbo. There, there's no way that, uh, a GT45 is going to get you there and just forget about it. I would use the the VS Racing Billet 7875 at this point. It, it'll spool a little better. Um, this is the next generation. If you're running a 4.8 or a um, 5.3, I'd probably go with a smaller AR. But the divided housing should spool good too. And everybody gets fixated on that. I want it to spool lightning fast. When they've never had anything spool at all, they don't even know what spool's like. I mean, you're still talking about an engine that, that, you know, before it gets on boost, is still going to make, you know, 350, 375 tire if you're running the basic sloppy stage two cam. So it's not like it's going to be boring before it gets on boost, but whatever. Um, I would start with the bill at 78, 75. The cast will get you there. It just doesn't quite spool as good. If you can swing the extra money, I would do the billet. A lot of people would go to an S480 here, but that would change your uh, manifold options and stuff from the previous video. Those those logs from Will Barnes and the ones on eBay and Amazon, they have a T4 flange, and they don't quite spool as fast. If you're building a straight-up drag car, you probably don't care about that because, you know, you just have to get off the line. If you're building a straight-up drag car and you do care about spool, you're dumb because you probably want it softer on the launch. Um... So yeah, I probably wouldn't go to an S480 here. And then last but not least, I would consider your safety. If if you're just on the internet looking at all these builds and, and seeing people do all these things and going, my God, I want to do that. That sounds fun. Um, and you've never, ever driven anything faster than like Uncle Rodney's fucking Monte Carlo SS with the 305 high output and the Holly 650 double pumper. You, you really need to consider what you're doing. You... you you can die. So, you know, whatever. I'm out there driving around in my truck on stock 40-year-old suspension, stock 40-year-old brakes, um, dry rotted tires. It, it's not super safe. It's not a super safe situation. So, via con Dios. And that's pretty much the video. The links will be in the description. And I thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'll probably answer them. Maybe I won't. We'll see. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer, guys.